Hey team, welcome back to The Basics. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I know I haven't put out a lot of videos lately. I've been busy. Just finished my first year at law school. Super pumped about that. Thank God uh, that he got me through. And um, I'll be doing an internship down in Charlotte this summer. So I'm kind of away from the home base. Still kind of settling in to where I'm going to be able to shoot here on the East Coast. However, there's some exciting opportunities for me with this piece of land I have access to. Um, I'm working on building a 300-yard range and uh, getting a nice solid berm for pistols and CQB type stuff. And there's also some potential to shoot out to 800 yards there. I've shot out to 400 so far. Um, 800 should be doable. We just need to work out a few things. But nevertheless, hopefully moving forward, depending on how this internship goes, how much time I have, this, that, and the other, um, I hope to have a lot more shooting videos, actual footage of me using these new guns, talking about the performance. Um, I hope to have more time to talk about some gear, some different philosophies that I've had over the past year as far as training, uh, you know, just how to approach guns and gear and all those sorts of things. So please stay tuned. I hope to do more. Um, hope to do some more podcasts as well, if not over the summer, for sure next year with the Firearms Awareness Club. So stay tuned for that. For now, let's talk about the subject of the video, the NX-8 1-8 by Night Force. Now, I can't really start talking about the optic until I kind of go through the philosophy of use. So I'll sort of start with that, uh, and then we'll talk about the optic as I'm discussing this. Um, and the bottom line is that this is a optic for a versatile weapon system. If you want optimization, which is different than versatility, this is not the optic for you. Uh, what I mean by that is... If you want something that's going to give, if you want like a dedicated optimized long range gun and a dedicated long uh, close quarters like self defense gun, this optic kind of falls in between. It's not going to give you what you need. For me, I have a dedicated optimized home defense gun, self defense gun. This is what I would grab if I actually like needed to defend myself. And that's because this is going to give me solid performance out to a realistic range for me, like 100, maybe 200 yards, depending on the area of operations, uh, to help me defend myself. It's small, it's light, it's accurate, um, it's going to do the trick. For long range, like a dedicated long range gun, that's what my Ruger Precision Rifle was for. I say it was because I sold it. I'm really sad about it, but it just wasn't right for me to keep it here on the East Coast. It, it's like owning a race car and never taking it to the racetrack. You know, if you don't have at least 1,000 yards to shoot a 6.5, uh, I don't really see the point in having one. It would have just sat in my safe. So I sort of have an optimized rifle here. I wanted something to replace the Ruger Precision Long Range stuff because that's really fun and I enjoy it. And so when I sold that one, I said, you know, I'm going to keep the SPR, a true SPR. This is the first long range gun I ever made. It has a special place in my heart. I've taken this out to a thousand yards before. I've competed with it. Um, it's just an awesome rifle. So I'll probably chop the barrel at some point, make it a 16 inch. But I wanted it to have a new piece of glass. I wanted it to be really nice. Um, this isn't an optimized long distance gun though. This is like a true SPR, I would say. It can do long range, it can do close quarter stuff. It's versatile, it's not optimized. Um, if, you want optim if you want optimization, uh, get like a four to 16 and then run like offset irons or an offset armbar. Um, then you're getting an optimized optic for both things. If you want one optic for everything, this is something to look for. This is not going to give you the best performance at distance, and it's not going to give you the best performance uh, at close ranges, but it'll do both fairly well and pretty well once I think you get used to it. Um, so let me explain what I mean by that. And also, just to give you a better understanding of my frame of mind, I'll talk about two things. I wanted to get this so I could sort of maintain it as like my fun recreational gun, take it out to distance, still use it up close for two guns and other things like that. Um, and then I wanted, I was comparing it with the Vortex Razor 1 to 6. That's my other frame of reference. It was a little bit more, uh, this is a little bit more expensive than getting a full price Razor. You can find, especially like the Gen 1s, for like around 1,000. You can also get a PST Gen 2 1 to 6 for under 1,000. So if you're really on a budget and you want like a low power variable optic, I would look there. Um, but for wanting a really nice piece of glass, it was really between this and the Razor for me. Um... And given what I wanted to make this rifle, like something that was more focused on long range that could also do close range stuff, 
um, I opted for this over the razor. I did a lot of analysis. I wish I had all my notes here in front of me, but I threw them away. But the bottom line is, is that this reticle is better and the magnification is better for long distance once you get out past 400 yards. Um, the Vortex Razor has like a hash for every 4 MOA. This has a hash mark for every MOA. Um, it's just better at doing your holdovers, both for windage and for elevation. Also, the turret is the elevation turret is uncapped. The windage turret here is capped. I don't usually dial the windage. That's fine. But if I'm at like four plus 400 plus yards doing my holdovers, or if it's really windy, I can just dial in the elevation and then do my holdovers for windage and still get a really nice refined holdover in that sense. So I think it's better than the Razor for true like long range precision past 400 yards. If that's not something you care about, if you mainly want to do like intermediate range stuff, like 100 to 400 yards stuff, or if you're like, yeah, I want to shoot out to 600 yards, um, but just on like big pieces of, you know, silhouette size steel, then I would say, yeah, one to six could probably work. For me, I wanted like chest size targets, like 12, like 10 to 12 inches out to 600 yards. So like two, two MOA is kind of what I'm thinking a 16 inch plate at 800 yards. Um, I think something like this is better because you'll have a better time of getting those refined holdovers. Um, so that's where I think spending the extra money on this around 1800 bucks versus like the 1500 for a razor or like a thousand if you get one of the gen ones. I actually got this for a pretty good deal, like 1500. It was like a demo model. So pretty, pretty pumped about that. I, I wouldn't have spent a full 1800 on it. Just the money I had and like where I'm at in life, it wouldn't have made sense. But 1500 yeah, it was enough to help me pull the trigger. Um, looking at the reticle, I already talked about the positives of it. It's got those really nice refined points for holdovers. Um, what I don't like about it. And this con for long range is what makes it a pro for shooting it at 1x. Um, 8x magnification. If you're looking, putting the target the crosshair is right on the target. It's actually not even a crosshair. So it's like a 1.5 MOA dot with like a big, bold sort of ring around it. And um, that's not that great because 1.5 MOA at distance, you know, depending on the size of your target, could overshadow your target. It, it's very hard to get a refined point of aim versus if you're just using like a legit crosshair, you can pick like of a 10 by 10 inch square plate, you could pick a corner of the plate to hold on. Versus this thing, like, you're pretty much just trying to put the center of the dot in the center of the target. So, again, it's not optimized for long range, but you can still get it done. Especially if you're doing holdovers, because uh, the lines below are much more refined. So, you can get a better point of aim using that. But, yeah, the center of the dot, the center of the crosshair is cluttered. Um, it makes it hard to see the target. If you're just, even if you can see the target pretty well, just having that big ring around it is sort of distracting. Um, but it's doable. I mean, I've, I've had hits at, at 400 yards on a nine by 12 piece of steel, um, using holdovers. Um, so it's, it's, it's doable to work around. Um, additionally, a difference between eight X and like the six X for the vortex, um, probably not going to matter that much if you're inside of like 500 yards, but excuse me, once you get out past 500, I think you're really going to benefit from having the extra two X magnification especially at like six to 800 yards, uh, having an 8x scope versus a 6x, I think you're going to notice a difference. Cranking this down to 1x, and granted, I haven't, I haven't messed with the Vortex 1 to 6, um, but I've done a lot of research on it, so I'm taking other people's thoughts and applying it to my analysis here. Um, the thing that makes the, the con of long range, having all that clutter in the middle, makes it a huge pro when you're actually shooting it in short range. When you turn on the illumination, all that clutter now at 1x is like this big old just bright ball. That's super easy to see. It has these three big black lines coming in it like this and this big red dot in the middle. Um, so it's fast. I mean, the eye box isn't super forgiving like I've heard the vortexes are, the razors, but... You know, if you train enough and you get your head in the same spot every time, uh, it's going to work. And the illumination, it goes from 1 to 10. I usually keep it on like 5 if I'm indoors or if it's dark. And like if it's outside on a bright day, I'll be at like 6 or 7. 10 is just like it's a huge just balloon. Um, so it's totally daylight bright. Uh, 
you know, you can use it with both eyes open. You still kind of feel like you're looking through a tube. You know, like when I first started looking at it before I bought it, I was like, oh, this is like just like a red dot. And I think since I bought it and mounted it to a rifle, you can kind of tell it's, it, you're still looking through a tube. It's a scope. But it's darn close. I mean, I've looked like the old Vortex one to four, ten times better than this. Or um, this is ten times better than that. Um, I've looked at other one to sixes. I just like the way the reticle looks. It's sort of like an aim point with like just the real thick red dot in the middle. If your battery happens to die, and we'll talk about battery life here in a second, um, even in a dark room, especially if you have like a flashlight, those three black lines will still be adequate enough for like uh, chest size shots because it kind of just directs your attention like that's where the bullets are going to go. Um, so it works. I've competed in a two gun with this. I took fifth place overall out of 50. I was the first in my squad and um, ran it pretty quick. And, and targets are out at like 50 yards um, for the longer shots. And But we were also in like a shoot house with targets at like two or three yards. So it wasn't too hard to get holdovers with this. Granted, I hadn't trained with it that much. Easy to get holdovers um, to account for your height over bore. Uh, and then, you know, at 50 yards, 25 yards, all the distances in between, it's ref it's small and refined enough to where I can put the bullets right where I want them. So it works. Um, really like it for the 1X capability. I hope to shoot it in some more two guns. I hope to maybe do some hunting with it, uh, just do some general training with it. Um, it works. Battery life. Now, here's the reason why I wouldn't use this uh, as a dedicated home defense or duty optic, I suppose, um, is because the battery life is so short. Now, I haven't tested this, but from what I've heard, uh, what I've read, is that Night Force says it's got like 22, 25 hours of battery life. I don't know at what setting, but that's not very much. And um, I know if it were me, if I was using this as like a primary home defense optic, uh, I would swap batteries all the time. So I, I just don't think it's the kind of optic that you want to depend your life with or on. Uh, if you're using it on the 1X level as a red dot sight, because the battery life is just so bad. Um, it works. Like if it's a recreational gun and you have the time to swap batteries, then that's fine. You know, like if a battery fails in the middle of a two gun, who cares? Um, if you really need good battery life, get an aim point, get an EOTech, get an MRO, get something like this. That's going to give you really good battery life. Um, or at least something to where you only have to change your batteries once or twice a year. Um, but like I said, for home defense, I wouldn't choose it, but if you're like, Hey, I'm mainly doing long range stuff and I'm going to rely on this every once in a while, just to flop or turn the uh, red dot on, then yeah, it'll probably work. I've only used it a few times, like all day long using the red dot and it hasn't died on me. I'll, I'll mess with it in the house as I'm practicing, kind of get used to it. It hasn't gone out. Um, it's really easy just to turn on and off. There's like an off button or an off position in between each on so if you're like hey i'm outside it's sunny set it up to seven and then just do one half turn and it's off so it's really easy to not uh burn the battery out if you don't want to it's easy to uh you know turn on and off and, and save battery power that way if you're cognizant um so yeah it works it works for close quarter stuff it works for long range a few of the things I don't know if I've talked about or not, um, the turrets are very nice and tactile. They're not sort of like, they don't click, you know, sort of like the, my experience with Vortex, it's click, click, click. Um, but it has a really nice solid thud, 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 and it just goes exactly where you want it to. It stops right on the line. They've got zero stops, which is great. Um, you know, it's just a good optic. So I'm really happy I got it. Um, I think it's going to serve my purpose as well as I'm shooting out to 800 yards. Uh, for me, it's nice, and we'll talk about this more if I ever do like a simplification video. Like if I'm inside of two or 300 yards, this is probably the gun I'm going to grab. If I'm outside of two or 300 yards, this is the gun I'm going to grab. Um, I can do this for fun for like two gun. I can still use it for close quarter stuff if I want. Um, but it just, it helps me cut down on like ammo, having to buy really nice expensive 6.5 Creedmoor. I can spend like 15 bucks a box for match grade 223 and still get out to 800 yards. Um, I'm using the same platform, so the controls and the training is, is going to be the same. 
And uh, it's just fun. It's just a real durable rifle, and I think this optic is going to add a lot of value to it as well. So if there's anything that um, you want to know about it that I didn't cover, or if you just have questions or something, hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to answer quickly. I might even be able to do a follow-up video uh, if there's enough uh, content for me to put out. So stay tuned. I hope to get a lot more footage shooting this, both at uh, distance and at close quarters um, distances. So stay tuned for those videos and uh, some other good content coming at you, hopefully not too far off in the future. Thanks, guys.